so yeah when you're crafting the guarantee you've got to make sure that it's not just based off one simple thing it's also based off things such as you know are they showing up to the one-to-one -one calls that you have are they sending you daily reports obviously hitting the numbers um i think you made an important point about should it be looms messages you know it's important to have a um a variation in your outreach and your messages because not everyone's going to read emails and everyone's going to read their dms but yeah i think 100 new outreach 100 new contract uh, contact attempts per day would be a nice and easy thing to give people it's achievable it's going to be hard work but if they do that signing a client within 30 days i would i would say is doable that's what we used to do when we had um when we did sort of coaching for agency owners we'd say you know, 100 outreach attempts per day we guarantee people they sign a client within the first month all right so that's 100 across everything any sort of outreach email linkedin facebook instagram yeah 100 across anything which um, and, and you wouldn't sell that any higher or anything or would that be too much it's i, I personally think it's going to be too much for a lot of people to comprehend and understand meaning it might put them off your actual service yeah it can be quite intensive but um yeah obviously to, to add on to that to make it a bit more challenging but again it's not trying we're not trying to like scam people we're not trying to make it literally impossible to to get this to get the to claim the guarantee refund or whatever or whatever we're trying to make it so that if people actually do these things they will be successful so obviously 100 new outreach attempts per day that on its own wouldn't actually guarantee anything it probably wouldn't lead to um them signing a client you need to have the other parts of that follow-ups the leads need to be good quality um you know you need to have certain meeting booking rates you need to obviously if you're doing the coaching or the the teaching they need to be checking in with you they need to be making sure that they're following the process that you've laid out because uh, some people could just try and like sort of cheat the system and just you know spam 100 emails a day to like random crappy leads or something so i would, I would try and build out the strategy a little bit more um have a think on how you can do that and, and put it in the uh, in the ask me anything channel on discord and I'll give you some feedback, but you want to make it like a list. So ours is just a list of like 10 criteria you need to meet. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Well, yeah, hundreds are good, a good number. What, yeah, what kind of processes? Go ahead, sir. Yeah, what was you going to say? I was going to say, what kind of process are you teaching people? Well, you know, what are you advising people do? Um, so it's just... Um some strategies within um instagram facebook and linkedin uh and then like personalized zoom uh, looms even sent through email yeah. and some like facebook ad stuff as well and then after that it's also just helping people close deals like sales stuff like making their script um yeah basically that and closing deals how to handle objections all that sort of stuff okay yeah makes sense yeah so just try and work backwards from um obviously what what they need to do to get success and make sure that they're doing everything possible it might seem quite difficult it might seem like a lot of criteria but again the, the whole point of this guarantee is to attract people to your offer and then once they're there you can impress them with your service your case studies your process and then most of the time, so like I said before, we've only actually had, I think, one person out of maybe 10, 20 different uh, ideal clients that have come through this through this guarantee that we had in an ad actually actually uh, meet all the criteria for guarantee. But the 10 plus of the brands actually still signed because they were still impressed with what we could do. But they, uh, they didn't even qualify for the guarantee. So and without the guarantee, you know none of them might have even applied because we might not have been able to give them that offer that made sense 
So when you're on a call, do you do you explain all the criteria quite clearly? Yeah, at the end of the call, to so go through your whole process. If someone asks before, you know, what's the guarantee? How do I get it? You just say, first, I'll just show you the process so you, so you can make sure that you understand. And um, so you actually have confidence in our abilities. I'll show you what we've done before. And then at the end, I'll go through the, the criteria, the guarantee. Then it gives you a chance to impress people. You get to the end of the call, they're probably already sold. They want to work with you regardless of the guarantee. You then lay out the criteria. If they meet it all, obviously you have to, you have to, um, what's the word? Uh, you have to sort of honor that guarantee. But if they don't, you can just, you know, let's say, for example, um, they, they're unable to, if, if it's lead generation, if you're, if you're trying to book calls, if you say that you need to be able to take calls within 20 minutes of people getting in touch with you, if someone says, oh, it's impossible for me to do that, then you just say, well, unfortunately, you're not, you're not going to be able to qualify for guarantee because the results we've promised here rely on you being able to do and to be able to do that. doesn't mean we can't get your results. We might just be able to get you slightly less results than the guarantee offer. So if you instead guarantee whatever, 30, 30 booked calls a month, if they can't quite meet all the criteria, you'll just, you know, you can say, well, we'll probably get you a good amount of book calls more so than the service costs but you know getting those 30 guaranteed calls you're going to have to meet all this criteria and unfortunately you don't but at that point they're already sold on what you can do yeah do you think that's fairly doable um if they were doing like 100 connections a day 30 appointments a month you think that's no nah, nah, i wouldn't say that no um, it really depends on the on the agency you know it depends on the i would go a lot lower um most most agencies, you know, I don't know how you're pricing your service, but whatever, let's say it's 2K the month, that might end up being two, three clients to break even if it's a, if it's a low ticket agency. Um, you know, some agencies are charging a thousand pound a client. So hopefully they've got at least like a 30% conversion rate. So if they only need to convert two or three clients in a month to, to um, break even or get profitable on the investment in your services, you know, they want 10 meetings, 10, 15 meetings, maybe. So, yeah, I wouldn't say 30. I would say maybe 10. Do you but, think that's still quite attractive or it's, or it's all right? Or... Yeah, I think so. Definitely. 10 qualified meetings a month is uh, always going to be interesting for people, like guaranteed, because why, why would they not? It's all, it all comes down to ROI. If you were charging 30K for that, then you probably people are going to think, well, I can't make an ROI on that because I can't even get 30k back from 10 appointments. But if they do the math in their head and they think, okay, I'm paying this guy 2k, he's going to guarantee me 10 qualified booked calls. If I can convert only three of them, I'm profitable. And a lot of the time, you know, they can, they'll be confident they can do that. In, in your discovery session, it's important to make sure that you get them to firstly know and then actually say what their close rates are because then you can kind of use maths to your advantage so if you say if i brought you 10 qualified leads today how many could you close a lot of the time their ego is going to get in the way as well and they're going to inflate their numbers because you know you can be like you know you seem a good salesman i assume you can close quite a lot of people if they're qualified they're going to they're going to say some high numbers so then if you say well i can guarantee you 10 booked meetings a month you've just said you've got a 50 percent close rate that's five clients you also said you charge 2k a month i've just brought you 10k in business there and i'm only charging you 2k so would you not think that it's a bit of a no-brainer to work with me and they can't really say no in that situation yeah yeah that makes sense yeah just remember guarantee has to once you once you've done it if you read through it if they do all of those things in the criteria, they will be successful without a doubt. And remember that the aim of the guarantee is just to attract people to your offer. All right, so I'll do the 100 connections a day, but just lower the um, appointments per month then. Yeah, for sure. I think that's fine. Yeah, good work. Also, um, that was another question I had. I didn't know how to, because I was charging like, uh, 1.5k 
but I didn't know if that was a good um I think that is okay to charge that. Yeah. Have you got a lot of case studies or are you just starting out? Uh I've got a few case studies, yeah. Yeah, 1.5k is you know a fair a fair fee. I would uh I would say a few of the agencies charge that. We've worked with appointment appointment setters before and um email cold email agencies that I think they they guaranteed um eight booked eight qualified booked appointments a month and I think they charged two K USD which is not too far off one point five. Did they take the carry the service for you? Did they what, sorry? Did they do the service for you? So yeah they did all like, the cold emails. Oh, okay. So d- done for you which Obviously, it's a little bit maybe more value than if you're just showing people what to do. But it also yeah. to the value. You know, like I said, as long as you can show that you can get an ROI on that, you price it as high as you can, as high as you you can really. Also, um, I do like a one-off payment. Um, yep. I don't know if that's is is that bad. Like I don't know if that's quite sustainable. It's not because it's not a monthly retainer. No, I would definitely get people on retainers for any any sales efforts. Your sales cycle, you know, is going to be sixty days, ninety days most of the time. Um, depends on the service, but usually from first outreach to close in agency life, thirty days is. Uh, I mean, it does happen, but it's um, it's probably about a month to two months i would i would always try and incentivize people to work with you for three months two or three months okay so whatever i'm charging i just split it into three uh yeah or i mean 1.5k a month is is probably doable i think that's a fair price especially if you're guaranteeing the number of booked appointments yeah and then if i was doing like calls would I just do instead of four calls a month, eight or twelve or something like that for three months? Yeah, you could split it up, or I would, I would maybe say, just spread that out. You know, each month you can get ten booked calls, or maybe you do. It's a three month program, and you guarantee, you know, thirty booked calls over three months. The month ones, obviously. I was going to be a little Oh, bit no, sick. I meant that, like, part of my package as well, like, so I'm going to give them a lot of documents, but, like, I would do some one-to-one calls with them. That's what I meant. Okay. So I'll well, spread that out over the over a few months. Yeah, so, like, maybe just do, yeah, I'll just, I guess I'll have to just spread that out. Yeah. I'd always try and try and do two or three months for any sort of service because first month's all, always going to be testing, experimenting, trying to find your groove because every every company is different so yeah you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot is that by like not having so yeah is that like not money money not coming in like sustainably is that what you mean no just you know if, if you're starting a new process the first month compared to the second month is always going to be it's always well, not always, but most most likely will not be as good in terms of results because in month two you've had the previous month to work out. Okay, this offer is attracting the most leads. You know, this subject line is working best for them. This Loom strategy is working best for them, and you can double down on what what you've learned already. So trying to just say, so trying to manage expectations and ask and get people on two or three month program is always going to be beneficial for you and even saying that to them it helps you out manage expectations if you can say look month one we're going to spend a lot of time learning and and seeing what works and what doesn't so month two is going to be a lot better so you shouldn't really expect month one to be you know incredible um and you might take us a month or two to get going that's why i think for your offer maybe a guarantee that's spread out across the whole program would work best such as we guarantee you 30 appointments over the course of three months because month one you might get five and then month two you might get 10 and then month three you might get 15 because you've managed to improve improve what you know the strategy 
Makes sense. Cool. I think there's someone in the chat. I don't know if he wants to ask a question. Yeah, sure. There's a few people on TikTok Live as well. If you have any questions, TikTok Live, just uh, join the Discord. We're going live every week and answering questions through there. Um, I didn't see your message, Matt. So if you just want to follow up, that'd be fine. And George, um, I don't I don't personally do ads for Amazon, but I know a good agency. I can put you in touch if you let me know what you're looking for. Drop me a message. Uh, Metro is in here. Have you got a question? I'll just join to the training, maybe. Um, yeah, if I can hey. ask one. Yeah, man, how's it going? How are you, bro? Yeah, good. Good, thanks. What's up? Um, so I was just thinking there, um, do you recommend using people on Upwork to do the service for you? Personally, no. Depends how early on in your journey you are. I've never had good experience with Upwork. Um, you know, it all depends on what your goals are out of this. I know a lot of people that have successfully... So I'm guessing you're talking about here, is this like SMMA where you just hire someone to do all the work on Upwork? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah, so because we're just basically... All right, we're just starting off, so I think we should have our website done by Friday. Like, so from there on, we're just trying to see what's the best way to go about it. You get me? Yeah, yeah. So, have you got you know particular skills yourself? Are you were you able to fulfill, or are you are you needing to do this because you can't actually you know you don't have the skills? I wouldn't be I wouldn't be much familiar with like ads and all that stuff like i know about it but i wouldn't really know like what way to go about it you see that's kind of why i was kind of looking towards um upwork and all that or, or even fiverr as well like unless you have any recommendations like yeah i'd stay away from fiverr Upwork's a lot better um yeah so you you're gonna you're gonna struggle with up with up work and um, there's quite a you're either gonna get people charging a lot because it's quite easy to get work on Upwork if you're really good. So you're gonna you're gonna find people that are charging like five hundred pound, a thousand pound plus for for managing one ad account. Which when you're starting out to get retainers beyond or to get retainers that that makes that make sense can be quite challenging um, because you know, you're gonna have to probably go with lowish retainers, you know, thousand pound maybe um, when you start out because you're lacking that reputation and, and case studies. So that means you probably have to go for the lower skilled people on Upwork. And there's a ton of absolutely crap people. Um, and there's a ton of okay people, but trying to find the difference between those can be really time consuming. You can end up, you know, it's trial and error a lot of the time. We've hired people that have seemed really good. When we were, we were in the same position, we scaled too fast. My co-founder who managed the ads at the time was managing, I think 23 ad accounts himself. Like every day was a 12 hour day, it was insane. Um, but we had like five more clients signing over the next month. So we needed somebody like now went on Upwork, found some guy that sounded really good, brought him on and it was a complete shit show. And we had all the clients that he was managing. They were all unhappy, didn't lose them. I think we lost a few, but it ended up being more of a headache. Um, so we went down the route then of actually trying to find people that had some sort of experience and then training them in house. Now that's not a fast solution. And if you can't physically train them yourself because you don't have the skills, it's probably not going to work for you. So I would try and maybe get started with someone on Upwork and then use them to train somebody that's in-house or even yourself just trying to learn those base skills. Um, as soon as you get funds in the business, I would look to try and hire somebody that's skilled in-house because it um, is a big benefit to having that you know, if, so if it's a contractor, they're going to charge more. Your margins are going to be worse. You don't have that loyalty. The relationship isn't there. Um, our best employees are people that we've hired and then trained them from scratch. And now they're better than a lot of people we could find. So I'd say Upwork could help, could work. But um, I would say that's not a long-term strategy. Maybe just a short-term solution. Um, <coughs> yeah, really that's... As well with your vetting. So... Just a few things. Uh, you need to make sure you have references if possible. You need to make sure that they're actually 
willing to show you examples of ad accounts that they've run and work they've created and brands that they've worked with. If they can't show you that, it's a massive red flag. Um, you want to try and give them a test. So um, it's quite hard if you don't have any ad accounts to look at, but just asking them like questions around specific things like what what is a good return ad spend? You know, what metrics do you measure? Because some people are just completely bullshit on, on Upwork. Um, I would say you want to get like five or six candidates and, you know, really take your time in hiring process. There's a, there's a saying where it's a higher, higher, fire fast, higher slow the way around, um, you know, fire people that are bad really quickly because it just completely crushes your business, but hiring people really, really take your time and doing that because it's, it's very time consuming. And if you get it wrong, it can mean you put in a lot of work just to have to get rid of someone. Yeah, that's fair. Do you, do you recommend any anywhere other than YouTube to learn about the ads and all that stuff? Like, do you do it yourself or? Yeah, we, so my agency, we do coach people and help people. Um, it's something that we're not doing right now just because capacity with Black Friday and just capacity overall. Um, but we are putting together a, you know, program to help people. So, I probably can't help you immediately, especially if you're looking to launch like next week, but um, definitely in 2023 and obviously joining the discord is a good first step. We'll be teaching you all that kind of stuff in there, but um, beginner steps, YouTube does have a lot of the stuff you can, you can learn on there. Um, but yeah, I, I, if I were you, I would use Upwork as a very short term solution. Try and, because if you have confidence that you have someone that can at least fulfill the services to some capacity, you can then bring in clients. You can then start making money, money in the banks. Just save aggressively when you're starting out. Try and get 10K in the bank before you spend any of it. Obviously, if you need it to live, it's a different question. But um, try and get 10K in the bank and then try and bring someone in, in-house. And uh, obviously, either pre-trained or get someone to train them. But yeah, uh, YouTube's good to start with. Um, we'll be doing, we'll be teaching you all that in the Discord as well. Hope that helps. Yeah, that's good, man. Thanks for that. No worries. Have you um have you just launched your agency just off your own back, or have you done a course or any anything already? No, literally just off off my own initiative because it's me and my one of my friends really like because we've been trying to just like work for ourselves really like. And then we, because I know a fella that he, he like he does websites and all this kind of stuff. Like he works with social media and all that kind of crap. So I was just kind of talking to him then, and then we just kind of built something up then. Nice. So we're good. just trying to, yeah, we're just trying to get clients. Well, we're no, we're no rush to get clients really, but we're just trying to get everything sorted first before we can go ahead and, and actually prove that we actually have something there in the back other than just saying, oh, we have an agency. We don't actually have anything to show for it. Like, do you get me? Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Sounds good, man. Either of you got any other questions? Sweet. So... Um. Sorry. Sorry, going back to uh, talking about the monthly retainer thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how that would make sense because obviously I'm going to be giving them a lot of like step-by-step -step documents. It's like a big file. So would I just like have to give them... Because if I was doing a one-time payment, I would just give them the whole thing, like the whole program sort of thing. But if I'm doing like monthly retainer, how would that work? You could offer, you know, the majority of the service could be, or not majority, of, a big part of the service could be weekly calls, weekly, weekly coaching calls, training people, you know, watching their sales calls, feeding back to them, giving them tips, just just basically being that accessible to them to answer questions and and they pay a monthly fee to do so. Um, you could, you know, say that I'm updating and sharing the new strategies continuously, so you're going to get access to all of those. So that's kind of what we do with some of the coaching stuff. I have a Slack channel that's available to them. They can ask questions because people will have questions continuously. Okay, so uh, it's not a problem to just send them all of the documents to begin with then? 
No, it isn't. But I would also try and te- I'll try and frame it like a like like how you learn anything, right? In school, in uni, and any online course, the best courses that you that you take online, or the ones I've done anyway, are sort of drip fed to you. If you give someone too much information to start with, and this is how we've coached people in the past, first week was lead gen, and it is nothing else but lead gen. If you give everyone, if you give people like so our sales training was, um, you know, coming up with an offer, lead gen, um, booking calls, outreach strategies, sales, you know, actually closing calls, uh, follow-ups, upsells. If you give everyone that information, if you give someone that information straight away, they get overwhelmed and they start reading shit and learning shit they don't need to learn. They start learning how to close someone before they even booked a meeting. And mm. it makes it so much more difficult. So you might want to do like a three-month program where it's like, first two weeks is lead gen coming up with the offer perfecting your offer qualifying leads second two weeks is outreach booking calls second month is just perfecting that process as soon as you start the outreach and you you know you start teaching the sales as well so they're ready but teach it more as as like a yeah a course because where you have to master every every step that'll get you better uh, get them better results and it'll get you better results from your service you don't overwhelm people. So I wouldn't just like throw and share like all this stuff for them to start off with because they'll just get overwhelmed. At least trip feed it a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to do it like that. Yeah. And then just explain to people. A lot of the time, like it's just managing expectations is, is such a huge part of sales. Like people will say, oh, you know, well, I need, I want, I want to get meetings booked in the first month. And you just say, well, that's just not how it works. Uh, you can't book meetings now. I'm not just going to do a different outreach process. Isn't the only thing you need to do. You need to work out your offer, perfect your offer. Obviously, if you're not actually getting the right leads, you're not going to book the meeting. So it's, you need to explain that to people. If you can explain it properly and logically, they'll agree with you and explain how that takes time. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah makes it easier for, for you as well because it's spread out over time you know you can um kind of take your time with it as well yeah yeah um also with uh me giving them the documents as well as like the one-to-one calls do you, do you think there's anything else i could offer them or do for them that would be good or is um, that enough? potentially giving them leads so i've seen that before like offering offering to sell people leads um just trying to think no if that's if that's enough then that's fine i thought like is there any expectations or anything i should be doing more but if that's good enough then yeah i mean obviously you could then branch out to done for you so actually like sending the emails sending the dms or whatever for them closing people you know you could offer i've done that before when we did when we coached agents before, I would just pose as a member of the team and closed deals for them, and they can watch and learn as you do it. Um, yeah, I would say done with you and a done, sorry done, yeah done with you and done done for you service. You can maybe split that out, um, because a lot of the time people like you give them all the resources, but they either can't bother to implement it, they don't. They fundamentally don't like that process. So if you can offer a solution to that, you might as well. You want to try and have a solution for every possible objection that a customer will have. So let's say you you do all of that, you give them all documents, you show them how to book meetings, all of that, and they can book meetings really effectively. And um, you show them even how to close deals. And then... Uh, Discord links in buy in my bio, um, and then they still can't close, and they say, "Oh well, I, you know, I just, I just don't like closing. Um, I just hate sales situations." What the hell can you say to them in that situation? Just you can't just say like man up, you know, just just get used to it, because some people just don't like it. But instead, if you can say, "Well, we actually have a service where we close people for you," or you know, we we uh, well, whatever, that's probably the only thing you can offer, but just trying to have some sort of solution for every objection. Um, as long as it's slightly focused, you know, there's a, there's a line where you need to 
we need to draw we need to draw a line somewhere so you're not just doing everything um but that's where you start bringing in partners you know for us with the services we offer it was things like you know we were getting really good engagement on the ads driving a ton of traffic to the website but the conversion rate was just terrible because the website was shit we don't we don't do web development so we drew the line there we didn't do it ourselves but we had the solution the solution was to refer people to a web development agency that we work with so we have a solution for every objection whether or not we fulfill that ourselves is a different question but you should always have a solution for everything yeah that makes sense and then like do that on pay per performance sort of thing that would make sense wouldn't it yeah, you could do percentage of the deal closed or uh, just a flat fee, two and two hundred dollars per closed deal or something. Or depends how how complicated you want to go. Percentage deals always work out more difficult to work out, but they're usually more lucrative. Got to be careful. Yeah, I mean, I could think about that at a later time, but yeah, I could definitely offer that. Make it simple to start off with, I think. Um, Cool. Any more questions? I said someone else who just joined. I'll answer the questions on TikTok as after I've answered people in Discord. So uh, if you want to get answers first, join the Discord, join the call. Uh, D, who just joined, you got any questions? Uh, hi, I just uh, joined because I completely forgot. I got. Um busy working on something um yeah so unfortunately i've actually missed quite a, or most of the the whole thing um but i'm I just, i've joined the discord though and um yeah just reading through and just trying to start my journey kind of thing all right man what are you trying to do do you have a business idea you started something or uh no i'll just um i'm just doing research at the moment but um, agency is the route I want to take. Okay. At the moment, yeah. So okay. I'm just doing, doing my my research and yeah. Sounds good, man. Yeah, the Discord will have everything you need in it. Um, to start off with, you know, I'm just kind of taking it slow at the moment, especially being too busy. But yeah, there's a SMMA and a TTMA channel right there. Please look at the moment. Just explaining what it is. The process um and then if you are interested in getting sort of a one-to-one -one help you know, just drop me a message but in that channel i'm going to be dropping loads of resources on how you can get started for free okay so tuned. um then make sure you join these calls if you've got any questions yeah we'll do thank you very much no worries, man. check out the business fundamentals channel as well it's got a free template in there the first step of any sort of business or entrepreneurial journey is working out actually why you want to do it your goals so make sure you do that if you don't have a target to aim for then you know you're never going to hit it you're never going to be motivated to, to actually do something so um yeah make sure you check in check in the discord i'll do announcements whenever there's something new these live calls will be uh, every week as well uh, tuesday or wednesday i moved it yesterday because of the england game so but yeah, um, cool. There's no more questions. I'm actually going to do just a brief training now on. I just got two quick questions. If I could just yeah. finish with those, please. Sorry. Um, one thing was how can I build trust with um, a prospect or someone on the phone to basically yeah, just buy over the phone? Because yesterday I had a call mm -hmm. and I think he's just a bit nervous or he just didn't know really how to trust me. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's always gonna be really hard. It's always gonna be hard to close on a phone, especially with the high ticket service, like what you're offering. I've not really done that many. Um, I would always say try and not get in a closing situation on the phone. Uh, you know, as much as possible. The um, there's a, a the majority of selling trust, all that kind of stuff. A lot of it, not majority of it, a lot of it is down to like body language, facial expressions can't do any of that over the phone in person is always obviously not possible always in uh, in the online world we live in but a video call is your next best thing so always try and do that um just little things like that um 
and then you know building trust is there's so many factors that go into it but really trying to understand your prospects needs listening to them you should never be speaking more than listening in a sales situation you, there's a there's a good example of um someone had a i can't remember what book it was in now but they they had a conversation with the guy and literally all they didn't say a word all they did was listen to some guy rambling on and um you know he said that was one of the best conversations i've ever had if people appreciate you listening to them and listen to their troubles if somebody believes that you fu fully comprehend their struggles and challenges then they're going to trust you to be able to solve them so asking questions listening intently to what people are talking about really trying to dig deeper to the core issues uh, and then just basic things like having case studies um you know not trying to kind of blag people um you know trying to remove remove objections and red flags so having things at the ready uh, so if somebody says if somebody is going to ask you for case studies you know having things already built out that are ideally related to their situation and just trying to make things related to to that sales situation as much as possible so it doesn't just seem like a blanketed blanketed conversation template script um, and there's clever ways you can do that you can have a script you can have a template um, but you can relate every aspect of that to two unique situations usually quite easily so just trying to think about how you can always relate to their problems their struggles um yeah this is a massive 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 subject there's not just one thing you should do to build trust a lot of things go into it but yeah just really listening and understanding your prospect doing a lot of research up front so you understand that you have that understanding uh, always is going to help um Yeah, I don't know if you've got any questions about anything I mentioned there. No, I think you, you basically said it all, but uh, like a follow-up question sort of thing, uh, like what do I do if they can't afford the service? I mean, I know you can do something like a payment plan or something, um, yeah. but if they genuinely can't afford it, are they, just not are they just not qualified or should I just leave it? Yeah, usually... If somebody says they can't afford it, it's a smoke screen. Usually if they're on the call and if they've gone through all of that, you know, some people will have it. Most people will have an idea of how much something is going to cost unless you are pricing ridiculous amounts. They probably can afford it if they're on the call with you. Um, there's things you can do to stop that. So, you know, before you take any call with anyone, whether it's running ads or, doing emails or dms saying things that could disqualify people excuse me people immediately such as um like how many people work for them is it it's quite a clever way of doing it if it's a one-man band compared to 10 person business you know you probably want to disqualify people if it's just one person um for us you know we ask we make sure people have spent on ads before or they're even spending and doing a certain amount of revenue, that's we can get quite explicit with it. So we, on our ads, say, if you're not doing over 20K a month, do not book a call. It's literally that explicit. So just trying to be really aggressive with your qualifications. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of making sure that, I mean, I always think if someone says they can't afford it and they've done all, they've gone that far, it's probably because you've not convinced them enough, you've not sold the service enough. Like I said, it's a smoke screen. So trying to remove that objection. So you say something like, so let's say you say you're 1500 price. And they say, oh, sorry, I can't afford that right now. You say, well, what if we were to spread that cost out, like you said, over a month? Uh, you pay half up front, half at the end of the month. I oh, still can't afford it. You know, you say, what if we spread out even further? What if they still can't afford it? You say, okay, well, I'm kind of sensing here that you know, there's a little bit of hesitation working with me. Let's say you could afford it, hypothetically. Let's say you had more than enough money to afford my services. Would we be able to do a deal today? And then see what they say. They might then actually tell you the real reason that they don't want to buy. It's usually a smokescreen. Same, same thing when it comes to timing or need to speak to someone. If they say, oh, I just need to chat to my husband before I make this decision. Um, you know, you say, well, let's get your husband on a call. Uh, obviously if they can't do that you say assume your husband was here right now and he agreed and he was completely sold and he really wanted to go 
would we make a deal today? See what they say. Because a lot of the time they will say, actually, I, you know, just right now, just not fully convinced that you can help us. Um, I'd, I'd like to see more case studies, that kind of thing. It's usually a smokescreen. So, um, yeah, payment, payment plans, options is always a solution that sometimes actually works. But I'd say majority of the time people say they can't afford it. It's because of a different reason. And you've probably not sold your services well enough. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, going back to what you just said about asking them if they hypothetically did have the money, yep. or if they just said, yeah, I would, but then they actually didn't have the money. Just leave <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. A lot of the time, uh, sorry, sometimes when people say that, you know, they literally, they literally can't afford it. Um, you know, you ask them, okay, well, when do you think you can afford this? You know, let's have it. Let's put something in place. Let's put um, a, call, um, a call in the diary and we'll chat then. But just trying to do everything you can to really remove those objections because I don't think I've actually had anyone say that. <laughs> to be honest, there's always a different reason. Um, but yeah, sometimes it, it just, does come down to money and a lot of the time people say they can't afford it and they can so asking questions up front in that discovery phase will give you a lot of ammunition to combat that objection so i assume at that point you've you've worked out how much money they're doing in terms of revenue or they've said their goals you know let's say they wanted to get to 50k a month in revenue um they maybe told you their employees like like i said a lot of the time especially with your offer, you will know if they can afford it before they even tell you if they can or not based off all these questions and all this information you've got. So um, ask questions before the call, ask questions on the call. If you actually don't think you could, they can afford it, don't take the call, don't waste your time. If somebody says, you know, just starting out, um, one employee, or just them, don't have any clients, they want help getting clients, um, you know, that's probably going to be a hard sell for you. Um, uh, okay, that's good to know. So I shouldn't ever go for anyone who's just starting out or like a new agency owner. I wouldn't say you shouldn't ever go for it, but expect expect a lot of your time to be wasted. It really depends how much you value your time. Um, you know, there's always other things you can learn from that situation. Like you can test out sales strategies yourself. You can warm up the leads. You can provide advice. If you, you know, sometimes it's just valuable to do that to people, but. I would say don't expect a high conversion rate for those sorts of people. Um, once you get going and have momentum and your time becomes more and more valuable and you, you know, you really don't want to be um, taking calls with those people because yeah, it's unlikely they're going to be an ideal customer. But yeah, a lot of the time you'll, you'll hear things like, oh, I can't afford it. And you've had the business already tell you that they're doing 10 K a month and they want to get 50 K a month. And they've just said they can't afford like a, a 1500 pound service you know you can just bring them back to that and you say hey, i totally understand and agree with you that this is an investment you know there's probably cheaper services out there but we price based on value you said you can't afford it but earlier you said you're doing 10k a month which is really really good what i'm saying here is you know we can get you to 50k a month through our service you know all these appointments booked that we spoke about would you not pay 1500 pound today if you knew that within three months, you brought in whatever 10K in, in recurring revenue and then see what they say. A lot yeah. of the time people trying to get a deal, they'll say that hoping that you'll go, oh, well, what if we just discounted? Never ever discount unless it's the absolute last last resort. Um, yeah, we've, we've had situations even where we've, we've just said, said no. Um, we've, we've got to it basically, and, and realize that people are just trying to get a deal out of us. And we've said, no, sorry, we don't go in discounts. And then they've just said, okay, fuck it, let's go for it. <laughs> and they're literally just trying to get a deal out of you. Right, makes sense. So just um, remind them of the value and the outcome, which is quite important. Yeah, pretty much any objection, always just try and go back through the sales pitch, relate to that specific objection what is the best thing to do sometimes people just forget by the end of the pitch so there's certain things but that's why asking questions and listening is so important yeah if someone's asking people's goals is really good ammunition to have because you know you can just say look 
you're never going to get that 50k goal if you don't change something you, you know how long have you wanted to get to 50k you've been wanting to get there for three months and nothing's changed you're going backwards now i have the solution to get you there i understand 1500 might be a big expense for you right now but do you want to be stuck where you're at right now forever or do you want to potentially you know take a little bit of risk invest and then you know we can get you to that goal as as quick as possible just trying to really make people think and that emotion come in and um actually sort of justify why they were why they they're saying no but a lot of the time people are just trying to get a deal out of you <laughs> yeah thank you for that appreciate it uh, just a quick one there if i can um, well, what do you think would be the best way to go about when starting? Like, what do you think, like me personally, what do you think I should focus on when I'm starting the agency? Like, good question. Uh, what do you, sorry, what do you mean by focus? Like, 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 focus on, like, do you think I should focus on one thing? Like, for example, like, let's just say TikTok advertising, like, or something else? Like, yeah, I would always niche down and focus to begin with um in a, in a certain aspect so it's kind of a double-edged double-edged sword so maybe service offering focus um obviously because you can only really fulfill something that you know or in your case someone that you find on upwork um but when it comes to like client ideal client i i always advise don't get picky in the beginning because a lot of the time it's just about getting money in the door You've not really got any justification to say I'm only going to focus on, you know, e-commerce businesses. If you've never worked with anyone, um, we would we spread the the net quite wide when we started out, and then realised that we got good cases of the e-com. We could relate to those people. And that's when we started focusing. But you know, business is about money, and um, it's about cash flow, especially when you start out. Because of the way. So be, so basically just whatever they need really just do one go about on whatever they need really like uh yeah it's a, it's a tough question man um i would focus on on one particular service to begin with or, or a collection of services because otherwise you know what's what's the expression the mass um jack of all trades is a master of few master of none if someone sees oh this guy's offering to do my emails my design my instagram or facebook whatever you know he's probably not good at any of them or he's probably okay at all of them so i think service is a is something you should focus on and niche down on and then for industry type of business you go after i wouldn't be too picky to start with and you can just tailor your messaging to each each industry so when you're reaching out you say we help um kitchen what modeling companies with Facebook ads, we help real estate agents with Facebook ads and, and tailoring the message to them in the outreach. But yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't get too mixed up with tons and tons of services to begin with because it usually means that you can't focus, your time spread really thin. It's a ball ache; they're expecting loads. Yeah, that's what I was thinking really as well. Because then you have things to do too much work then, and not enough resources to actually do the work. Like, yeah, exactly. We did we did Facebook ads to start with. That's all we did. And then once we had about 20 clients, we we noticed the areas that they were asking for or lacking in the most, which was uh, Google at the time, or maybe emails. Can't remember which one we brought in first. Um, and then we hired someone who was as good at Google. Once we'd already confirmed that, that like five clients would uh, were interested. And then we brought on someone for emails and did the same. And now our service includes uh, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Google ads, any social media ads, um, email marketing and SMS retention. And we sell people on a full package, but we have all the case studies now to show that. Whereas when we started out, it was, um, you know, you just want to try and maintain a focus. What, what, what did you think was the hardest thing when you did start? Um, overcoming like the, the failures, you know, the no's and the rejections. It's, I always, I always say the main part, the main sort of teachings and understandings that people and, and beginner entrepreneurs miss out on is the mindset. 
I didn't really realize this until I was until I started coaching other people. But so I, I had my me and my co-founder had quite an advantage without us even knowing when we started. We'd we'd already learned a lot about a mindset. I've been reading in personal development books since I was like 15. I'd always wanted to do something. I understood the, the mindset and the winner's mindset before I even had any results. When we started then offering coaching, we got a lot of people coming to us and we started helping people start their own agency. A lot of people came to us just because of the money. They, they never thought of having their own business. They just saw that we were helping people go from like zero to 20K a month agencies in like three months. And they thought, you know, I want a bit of that. And then we started teaching people and we really noticed a difference between people that we had a mindset module and people that kind of skipped over that because some of it does seem a bit irrelevant. But then you'd have people that would spend two weeks, they'd send a hundred emails or whatever a day, they'd get no's majority of the time because that's how it is. And then they'd give up and you'd say, why did you give up? And they said, well, I've had no's consistently for two weeks. Whereas the other, other some of the other people that we coached, this agency that are based in Manchester now, um, they're doing, I think, 60, 60 70K a month now. Um, they didn't get results for ages. They got loads of no's, exactly the same process and path that my agency took. Um, we, we spent two months, I think, before we got our first client working day and night. Um, but we managed to actually succeed because we just kept going. So if you don't have that fundamental understanding and mindset in place, you won't succeed. Um, if you don't give up, you, you have a very high chance of success, really, when it comes down to it. Um, just keep going. So spend some time to really work on your mindset, I would say. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Thanks for that. Sorry. I can put Sorry. resources in the, in the Discord at some point, but yeah. Um, Final few questions, guys. I'll jump soon. Hey, Joe. Yo, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for this Q&A. This is really useful. I've been kind of stalking in the background on TikTok, so it's quite cool to join this call. Um, quick question I had. I'm, I'm still in the early stages of, like, starting an agency, and I guess I just wanted some advice in terms of, like, creating a value proposition. Um, I'm still obviously testing with like cold email and cold DMs on like LinkedIn, but is, is there an, any advice for kind of creating a good offer? Um, and primarily, I, I think as we've kind of discussed, it's better to kind of focus on one skill set. And I think like either Facebook or TikTok ads is what I'll aim for. But is there any kind of suggestion you had, I guess, for like forming a, a, a good value prop? Um, and then I, I guess, how, how would you then? also choose like a good prospect how do you how do you figure out your out outreach strategy and like how do you pick your targeting if that makes sense with that offer yeah a lot of, lot of questions in there um uh, i'll try like, i'll try and try and answer all of them offer they, there's such a saturated market right agencies marketing whatever you need to really 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 stand out like and it's very hard to do so um you know even my agency with all the cases that you've got and the reputation is still, we don't get, we get a decent response straight on that on emails, but you know, it could be a lot, lot higher because people are getting 10 emails a day, <clears throat> a day, sorry. So having a guarantee is, um, it's probably, it's kind of what, what you need to have now to stand out. Now you're in a bit of an, a sticky situation starting out because you don't exactly know what you can guarantee. But I don't know if you might miss this earlier, but when it comes to making a guarantee, you need to make that guarantee. You need to uh, craft it in a way where if somebody, the criteria, all of the criteria is met, then it's going to be impossible for them to fail. So for us, for example, we require people to have a certain ad budget, we require them the brands to have a certain level of growth we require the brands to have no stock issues we require the brands to go full service with us uh, which includes just more than one service um so all these criteria and when i read the list and i think okay if a, if a lead has all of these things then we will be successful and we promise uh, we probably promise getting people to 100k a month or doubling 
their revenue within 12 months. Um, so that's how you should craft the guarantee. Now, when you're starting out, it can be quite quite difficult to, to come up with that. Um, you know, but you could base it off a certain increase in sales and you just give a full money back guarantee. But the whole point of the guarantee is not to actually have people qualify for it, which sounds a bit stupid. It's just to entice the leads. Like you said, it's trying to get, you know, you're just struggling to kind of come up with that value prop. That is the value prop that gets their attention. That makes you stand out out of all the hundreds of emails that people are getting. Once you get on the call, you then need to make sure that you impress them with your process, your case studies, if you have any, your, you know, you just need to get, get on with them, build the rapport, build the relationship. And then when it gets around to them qualifying for the guarantee, even if they don't, which a lot of the time they won't because you're so strict with it, they still want to work with you because they like the process. They trust what you can do. They like you as a person, hopefully. Um, and it means you don't, they don't qualify for the guarantee. You don't have to refund anything. They still work with you. Everyone's happy. Um, if that makes sense. So I try and come up with a few guarantees uh, for you. I could say it'd probably be revenue, revenue based, increasing revenue by X percentage. When you're limited to one channel, it's going to be a little bit difficult to hit that. But um, I've seen other people do like guarantee to beat your current return ad spend or you don't pay. Um, but yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, that's really useful. Thank you. Um, also, I kind of feel at the moment, like I'm just like, I have a, like a prospecting tool that I use. Um, and I, I guess I'm just kind of reaching out to quite a few different industries and niches. I don't know if, if like, is, is there a particular niche that you focus on or is there a way to identify something that works well? I know that on, online I've been seeing that like every niche is shit, but you just have to kind of pick one and understand what their pain points are and eventually kind of build up understanding in that space and be kind of a knowledge expert. Is that the best way to just go about it is just pick one or is there like a particular niche that you would focus on? It is once you get started, but the, like I said, I think before you joined, the most important thing is just getting progress because it helps you with your confidence. Then you get money in the bank. Once you get your first client, honestly, there's not a feeling like it. You, the, the amount of motivation you get, and just the drive you know you, you can quite happily work 12 hour days seven days a week if you know if you, once you once you see the see it working so just trying to get something in the door is what you need to focus on when you when you start off with so you need to go for the easiest possible uh clients which what we did was local local businesses people in our network just something you know just something to get as a case study to boost our confidence then we started getting picky once we had those case studies. So our third client was an e-com brand and we managed to get them, I'm pretty sure, only because we had the case studies before and the case studies weren't even that relevant. One of them was a, was a fireplace company, didn't do e-commerce, you, you had to book a viewing. The other one was an e-commerce company, but it was very, I mean, it sold online, but most people bought in store. Um, they, they weren't even related case studies to the brand, but we had case studies. And, um, you know, we weren't, we weren't picky. I would say, obviously there's a limit to that. So if you, obviously if you can't find a local business, which not everyone can, if you can't find someone in your network, which not everyone can, and you're forced to just do cold outreach to, to a random businesses, again, don't be picky, but there's a limit, you know, don't send, you know, 10 emails to a hundred different niches, maybe pick five niches because then you can maintain focus whilst also kind of spreading, spreading your net uh, somewhat wide. And then once you, because, you know, you don't really know what you're going to enjoy or, you know, what to, how to position yourself until you've got experience in a set. So you might think you want to work with econ brands and you might start doing it and then you might hate it. Um, so, you know, what we did was just focus on, yeah, local and then, once we had that and exploited that and we got into econ, we focused on what we actually related to, which was fashion, football. The first brand we signed was a football focused brand. Um, so trying to trying to find some possible way that you can relate to um, to a business. So maybe you have a certain passion, maybe you've got experience in a certain sector, 
um, I would try and do that, pick five different niches and um, craft unique scripts and unique outreach strategies to each niche and make it make it related to that niche when you're reaching out. So, you know, instead of saying I help businesses increase online sales, I help real estate agents in the London area increase the, the number of seller leads. That's how you approach somebody and that gets their attention. Um, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. I appreciate it. Sweet. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I need to jump now, but I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another training because I need I don't have time to do it on this call, um, and I don't think it's relevant to you guys in this call anyway because you seem to be all agency kind of related. For other people watching this recording or TikTok live, um, hey Connor, what's up, man? Um, I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can easily make an extra five hundred pounds to a thousand pounds per week making TikTok videos. It's something that we're focusing really a lot now as an agency because we we're growing we're scaling we're hiring more and more creators for our clients and we need to make sure that we have a good pool of creators so we're actually trying to train people on how to do this and then we guarantee you a position as well so i'm going to put a train together for this and um i'll put that in the discord group as well but yeah any anyone in here any questions let me know i'm going to go live again next week i'm going to be dropping more resources in the channel and yeah thanks for your time Hope you guys have a nice evening. Thank you very much.